You've played it over and over in your mind. The crowd echoes throughout the arena. A chance to be champion. Dreams meet reality today. The title game comes down to this. No time left. Got it! It's over! You target a hot player, you go right to him. He has taken this game over. Trade table in the upright and locked position. Three champions crowned already today. One still left to go. The Class B title game pits suburban Grand Rapids against inner city Detroit. A stark contrast and a very interesting title game between the Crockett Rockets and the Broncos of Coopersville High. Welcome to the Breslin Center in East Lansing. Josh Lewin along with Tim McCormick. What a day it's been. Three down, one to go. And what we've seen in the earlier games, Josh, because of the pressure of playing the state finals and also the, the tired legs and the great defense, a lot of missed shots. Rebounding has been the key. I think it'll be the same here. And some great stories, too. Maybe none of them more intriguing than Crockett, a school that's only been around for seven years. They've only had a basketball program for five years. Wow, here they are in the title game. And they've rocketed to prominence in Class B, and a big part of it has been the strong play so far of their senior star, Maurice Ager. He's an all-stater, capable of scoring so many different ways. Had a strong game in the semis, 18 points versus Richland Gull Lake. Now, you're really going to enjoy his work. As I said, he can impact the game in many ways. He shares the ball. He also goes very strong to the glass. You see the macho effort there inside in the semifinals. And also, you know that he can send a strong message when he needs to do so. Now, we ask the question, Ken is Mas Macho, Senor Ager, oh, Senor Nash Pater, because Nash Pater is pretty good too. Pater is the floor leader, and his coach said that without him playing a prominent role, that there's no chance for Coopersville to win the game. He's a senior floor leader for the Broncos, and I expect him to take charge. The Broncos have lost only once this year. Nash Pater has been a big part of that. For more on Nash Pater, we go to Shereen Sasky. Thanks, Josh. Well, surprisingly, Pater has played all season long with a broken lumbar disc. No one's quite sure when the injury first occurred, but it was diagnosed this summer. He played, or he had a full back brace for 12 weeks leading up to the season, and since then he's been playing with a partial back brace. Obviously, with the numbers he's put up, it's been more of a help than a hindrance. Josh? Excellent outside shooter. We look for Pater to come up big for Coopersville. They're trying to go to 27-1 and one and win it all at the Class B level. Rockets and Broncos from Breslin next on Fox Sports Net. What's the PA guy's name? Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we invite you to stand. Gentlemen, please remove your hats and caps and join us. Lyle, can you hear me okay? You can't hear me in talk back, can you? Featuring Sarah Kay from Sanford Bernian High School. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem.
MHSAA Finals on Fox Sports Net brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance, making your future more predictable. By wall side windows, most preferred, most referred. By Bell Tire, nobody comes close and nobody's closer. And by Little Caesars. The Breslin Center here in East Lansing, we have already seen Covert win Class D, Kalamazoo Christian win Class C, Pontiac Northern a winner at Class A, beating back Kalamazoo Central, and now it'll be either Detroit Crockett or Coopersville in Class B. Let's meet the teams. Here's Eric Set at the PA Mike. And now let's meet the starting lineup for this evening's game between the Rockets of Detroit Crockett and the Broncos of Coopersville. For Crockett, and forward, 6'3", Jr., number five, Ezekiel Adams. For Coopersville, at forward, 6'2", Sr., 30, Brian Boone. At forward for the Rockets, 6'4", Sr., 21, Yer Yerby. For the Broncos, at forward, 6'2", Sr., 32, Scott Rensema. And center for the Detroit Rocket, 25, 6'6", Sr., Robert Richardson. And center for Coopersville, 6'6", Sr., number 50, Evan Hare. At the guards, for Crockett, 6'1", Sr., Number one, Andre Johnson. For Coopersville of guard, six foot senior, 20, Josh Mirman. The other guard for the Rockets, six four, junior, number 15, Maurice Ager. And for Coopersville, at guard, six two, senior, 24, Vance Pater. Those are the guys who will be carrying the front of the scoring load. And there's the coach for Detroit Crockett, Robert Murphy. What a great story he is in his third year. Coming over from Detroit Central, where he had been an assistant. Central played here in a tournament final. He went from that to pretty much the Bad News Bears. Tim McCormick, a team that had been 0-40 in its first two years of high school basketball. But now they're ready for a state championship. And we'll listen in. Robert Murphy. Blast off, they say. Good little rocket set they are. Coopersville, on the other hand, with Rich Rensma in his 17th year. These guys have only lost once. That's a Granville Calvin Christian. Five games in. They've run off 22 wins since then. 32 years as a head coach. And he said that he's always dreamed about this opportunity and a tough road for both squads to get here today. Underway and Coopersville in white. Coopersville, a town of about 5,000. It seems like the entire town must be closed because it is a partisan Coopersville crowd sitting near us. They're gonna call a blocking foul here immediately on Rob Richardson. Let's get you back to the road to the finals brought to you by Little Caesars. And you notice how Coopersville had to get by Midland to Bullock Creek. They did that 59 to 48, having trailed that game 13 to 6. We open with what they call a two-point shot. That's what they call it. What we're going to see here, Josh, is the speed of Coopersville versus the size and interior strength of Crockett should be in a matchup that's, that's really a a study in contrast more than anything else. In many ways in this game. That was Brian Boom, by the way, with the first two points of the game. He averages 12 for Coopersville. Ball knocked loose and recovered by Aaron Yearby, one of the several football prospects that Crockett runs out there. Yearby up strong. Looking to follow, he is blocked, but then puts it back again. Evan Hare got a hand on it first, but Yearby completes it, and now a steal for Andre Johnson. Quickest hands on the court, and he lays it in. Ball security versus Crockett is essential. 
if you turn it over, they're going to lay it up on you. Almost another steal, as this time it was Ezekiel Adams right up on Pater. Coopersville from outside Grand Rapids, in between Grand Rapids and Muskegon. Here's Evan Hare, rainbows run up and in. And he had 14 points, 13 rebounds last night Did Evan Hare, the senior. He ties this game at four. Motion offense for Crockett. They also run a lot of sets, either to target a hot score or mismatch. It's kind of feeling things out here. Both coaches agree that to start this game, there's going to be some, some jabs just trying to feel out your opponent. Spinning inside once again, it is Yared Yearby. He's a Division I football prospect, a wide receiver. Three ball. Call him set shot. That is Scott Renzma. He is the coach's son. Now Johnson spinning inside. Good look in the conversion by Rob Richardson. Well, forget my pregame assessment <laughs> that these kids are nervous and they have tired legs, expect poor shooting. They're on fire both ways. 8-7 in the first two and a half minutes. Ball blocked away. Traveling violation called on Nash Pater. Scott Rensman just a moment ago nailed the three for Coopersville. And that's a big shot confidence-wise. His job is to play the role. He's a very good defender, but coming right back at you into your screen is number one, Andre Johnson. Just remarkable that Detroit Crockett is here. Having won the PSL, they have a 22-3 overall record. This is a school that does not have its own gymnasium. Ball knocked away, and the race is on. It is Meerman, down court, spoons it up and in. Josh Meerman gives Coopersville the lead. And Andre Johnson runs it across. It is again knocked out from behind by Meerman. And Meerman's got it again. And notice the decision making. Clearly, no fast break advantage. Slow it up, run the offense. Hare spotting up and he drills it. And a quick timeout by the Crockett Rockets. Evan Hare, the senior, the football tight end. You notice the, the ability to get the ball to the hot score, really enjoy smart basketball. Hare is off to the quick start, so you have to feed him the ball. Also, notice in transition, Josh Meerman, and you're seeing a couple kids Meerman, he was all conference this year. Pater was all conference. Air was all conference. And Redsma was honorable mention. Four guys on this team received recognition for all conference play. Now, what'd you say again about the wobbly legs here at the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> I was completely wrong, but I think a big part of it, the pregame message from the coaches, I think they acknowledge the fact that you guys are going to have the adrenaline pump going. Let's get good shots. And all of those looks have been squared shoulders, good legs underneath you. That's the reason they made them. Coopersville by three and Crockett in those teal uniforms designed by the coach Robert Murphy. Charlotte Hornets. Charlotte Hornet style indeed. They don't have white uniforms. They play no home games. <laughs> And the few that they do in borrowed gymnasiums at middle schools and rec centers, they wear these same teal. The only uniforms that they have, a little dish off. And a foul is going to be called inside. I believe they're going to get Rensma. That'll be his first. That makes that 22-3 and three Crockett record even more impressive. All games on the road. They began the year 15-0, and, and here they are in the Class B final. They trail by three early on. Crockett coach Robert Murphy says it plays like the lyrics to a blues song. Ain't got no home. Detroit Crockett, without a, a home gymnasium, has run off 22 wins this year, only three losses. And this is a team, when it first began the basketball program, Tim, they lost their first 40 games over a span of two years. It was at that point that Robert Murphy said, yeah, that's for me. He, he jumped from a winning program at Central where he had been an assistant lording over guys like Antonio Gates and Dante Darling, who went on to play at Eastern. Jimmy Twyman, who now plays at the University of Detroit. What they did, they won five games the first year. 
Second year, 15. And from that team, their top eight players came back this season, and now they've really exploded. I, I really think that this is one of the best stories. And 20 years from now, you're gonna be looking at this as a perennial state champion contender. Ball on the floor, scooped up by Ager. And before the shot was away, the foul is gonna be called. One official says it's offensive, one says it is defensive, and who's gonna win out? The foul is gonna go against the Broncos and Evan Hare. And Josh, we talked about the contrast in styles so far. Crockett, all eight points have come in the lane. Not shy about going inside. They do have some folks that can step out and hit the three, though, too, including the man with the ball here, number one, Andre Johnson. I think Cooperville feels pretty confident. Green and white in this house. <laughs> I think they do. Coopersville is a very nice story as well. Again, only one loss all year. Hager had it stripped away, but there's the follow. And going to the line following the basket will be Aaron Yearby, who's already got six points. Coopersville foul, 50. Coopersville foul goes on Hare again. That'll be number two. Does a lot of the dirty work inside. Yearby plays small forward and power forward. I think you mentioned earlier that he's an all-city receiver. So you know he brings the good hands to the table. Hare has to sit down with the two fouls. Mike Simon checks in instead. Yared Yearby. Why, why? Philosophy major, huh? 11-10 <laughs> remains the score. This Yer and Yearby has designs of playing D1 football. He's being recruited mostly by Division II schools right now. A lot of players, by my calculations, 14 guys in this game. They played football last year, so you know there's some good toughness. Three ball rings in from Nash Pater. Coopersville did play in the football state finals. They lost that to Orchard Lake St. Mary's. So now a lot of the same cast of characters back to try and get a title in hoop instead. 14-10, the lead for the Broncos. Almost another steal and instead a foul. Nash Pater, the All-Stater. That's got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> Spreading the defense out. But the nice thing, if he's making jump shots, it creates so much space for his teammates, especially the big guy, Evan Hare, inside, who's going to do some good work with his back to the basket. Johnson dumps to the baseline. Yearby spinning again. Boy, he's had it all going on here early. Yared Yearby continues to impress. He's got eight. Waiting for traffic to clear. Brian Boom spotting up. And it rolls out on him. Yearby was there and he thunked his head as he came down. It's going to be Coopersville ball. Wow. What a rugged rebounder inside. Ball goes up, nice box out. Going up strong, no. Boy, he hit, looked like he hit his teammate right on the knee with the back of his head, but he didn't lose the ball. Coopersville will keep it as it rolls out of bounds. Incredibly, we have seen only four missed shots in this game. Each team is six out of eight from the floor right now, and it's 14 to 12, Coopersville. The lob in. Knocked away, and Crockett's got it. Johnson, the point guard, trying to break it down. Off the back iron, the rebound taken by Arenzma. Meerman, whose older brother plays at Central Michigan University. What a storied year they had for a while. The darlings of the Mac. And Josh, this, this his brother is his favorite college player. <laughs> Good move inside, but before the shot away by Simon, a foul. And if they get Ezekiel Adams, that'll be his first. What a tricky little post move inside. Right, foul, 25. Now they get second. Richardson instead. That'll be his second. So both the big men, Richardson 6'6 six, six for Crockett, Hare 6'6 six, six for Coopersville. They've each got two fouls, and they're each sitting down. You look at the stats on both of these teams, they do a very nice job with the low turnovers. They run a couple of efficient offenses. No look 
behind the back drop off, and Simon missed the layup. Rebound dancing on the rim, finally taken by Yearby. Who else? Boy, he's been huge in the first quarter. Yearby, eight points, four boards. Crockett and Coopersville hanging together. No foul, they call it acting. Remember, no shot clock in the high school basketball. Ball stripped. Another steal by Coopersville. That's their fifth of the quarter. Slowing it down is Nash Pater. He had 17 last night against Midland Bullock. The three is off. Now, Ager, the man who rebounded it, has been quiet. And he's a guy that can fill it up. Averaging 22 a game, he's been scoreless so far tonight. Nice, fast pace to this game. Andre Johnson with Meerman guarding him. Here's Ager now. He'll spot up. Still can't get it to drop. Yearby yet another rebound. Ball out of bounds. Last touch by Yearby. It'll be Coopersville ball. Watch it as sit back and enjoy the expertise of the delivery. Josh Pater, as advertised, is very tricky with the ball. Would be surprised if Coopersville shot the ball quick. My guess is this will be the last field goal attempt of the first quarter. Pater behind the back, and they're calling a foul. They're calling Andre Johnson. It's a nice hit. No surprise with a couple football teams going together uh -huh. out here. Crockett looking to substitute. Wallace Richards coming in. Now, the tackling technique has a little to be desired. During football season, the coaches would clearly want them to wrap up a little bit better. But the tackle was made. Better get the shot up. Here it comes from three. Got it! And the clock runs out on Crockett. They're down five at the end of one. Nash Pater, a pair of threes. The senior leader, as the Broncos fans, very excited at Breslin. Back in a moment on Fox Sports Net. Garrett Yearby, a big part of that. And we're going to continue following the difference in the offensive attacks. Everything is going right to the basket for Crockett. On the other side, everything is on the perimeter for Coopersville. But somebody's going to have to put a body on Yearby because he has been the most aggressive interior player for either squad. Meantime, Wallace Richards back on the court. What an emotional night for him. And earlier today, at the funeral of his cousin, Takesha Barry passed away a couple days ago because of leukemia. A well-liked student at Crockett. And here he is, just literally hours after the funeral, he is on the court representing the Rockets. Johnson, high off the glass, he got it to go. So for many reasons, this is an emotional time for Crockett. It's incredible that just five years into their basketball program, they would be here at all. And it's been a, a long, strange trip for them all year. Again, a, literally a trip, having to play all their games on the road. Both of these schools represent wonderful stories. You'd have to call both of them long shots. Thomas Mutt couldn't get it to go, and they battle for the rebound. They held the ball, and the possession arrow favors the Broncos. Actually, it turns out it will favor the Rockets in a 17-14 game. Both teams have played all man-to-man -man defense so far, Josh. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see Crockett as the game progresses, get into some of their traps. They, they mix it up a variety, full court, half court, a little man-to-man, -man, little run and jump defense. They, they have a pretty nice variety. Can they do anything from outside? Johnson cannot hit. Rebound dancing around. Two bodies on the floor make it three as it rolls out of bounds. And Thomas Ma hurdles his way into the first row. 
Pretty slippery basketball. That looks like a Dennis Rodman play, diving out of bounds when there's really no chance to get it. But look at the hands. Right here, bam, it's mine. And then he was tripped. I think there should have been a foul. <laughs> Pretty good a hop slide. Thomas now right into the first row, thankfully, into his own rooting section. Josh, the reason we never jumped over the bench is probably because we couldn't. <laughs> yes. Some of us had minimal desire, too. Here's Maurice Ager, and he fumbles it out of bounds. So, indeed, that ball continues to slip and slide out there. In the first quarter, there were nine turnovers total between the two teams. Looks like we've had, what, three or four already here in the second. Double team pressure. There's the steal straight up. And a foul to reach in. Thomas, the man who was stripped, was able to get a hand in there. Wallace Richards known for his defense. That's why he's on the court. There's Coach Renzma. Told me in the small town they had a pep rally at the high school. All the elementary kids came. They were dressed up like super fans. <laughs> Each class adopted their own player. And there were about 1,200 kids at this pep rally. And then they made a long tunnel for the players to go out and wave the bus. That must have been a lot of fun. That kind of thing may never happen again in the town of Coopersville. More wrestling going on for the basketball. This is Coopersville's first appearance in the state final in basketball. It's a senior studded team, so you're right. This is their, their they, big push. They better take advantage because all their players are seniors. Hager missing. And the big rebound by Brian Klein. One of the few Bronco juniors. And a team that has no freshmen or sophomores, by the way. Boom along the baseline. Gets it right back from Thomasma. And a whistle and a foul. They get a reach in. Called on Wallace Richards. Worth noting again that big men for both teams are having foul trouble. A lot of perimeter action for both squads. And a timeout on the floor. Actually, just for substitutions here. Coopersville gets Nash Pater back in the game. Remember, he's hit a couple of three-pointers already. Looking to get it in. Couldn't do it in time. The five-second violation on Rensma, the coach's son. Now, a, a violation like that, it's interesting talking to the other coach, Robert Murphy. He said when he arrived at Crockett, it was literally a back-to-basics year. None of the players knew things like that there's a five-second rule, that they hadn't been playing organized basketball, didn't know things like you, you couldn't leave the foul line in between foul shots. That's interesting. He said they lost a couple games that first year. That's wiped away. And they call it against the Broncos. Coach Rensma can't figure this one out. It looked to me like he had two feet on the ground, shoulders square. You get hit like that, you might want to get rewarded. Second foul on Thomas Hunt. I'll let you play amateur official. <laughs> what did you think? No, no thanks. Don't like to play that you're, game. You're not goading me into that. <laughs> <laughs> I said I thought it should be a foul, and I was looking for a little backup from my partner. No, I did not have yeah. your back. Okay. I may agree with you. I just don't want to go on record. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk about it during the break. <laughs> There's a very good chance I agree with you. I'm just not. Stating either way. You always take Gibby's side. What, <laughs> what, what's the deal? You're, you're taller, but he's stronger. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> a little head fake, and now the drop off inside. Yearby couldn't get it to go. There's a foul. If it's on Thomas, but that's his third. And let's see, it is going to be on Nate Thomas, the senior. One of the guys that is able to clamp down defensively. And he's done a very nice job of taking charges. Now, he hasn't gotten a lot, but since they don't block a lot of shots, and that is a real problem for Coopersville, the next best thing is trying to lay their body on the line and take the charges. And let's keep an eye on Hare. Another foul, and that could be a real problem for the Broncos of Coopersville. And if you're looking for Hare, literally, you look for Hare. He's the guy with the bright shot yellow on top of his dome. There he is. 
Evan Hare, the senior, had a 14.13 rebound game last night. It's a pretty nice start for Aaron Yerby. Friendly roll. Rocket not going away. 17-16, and they press. And here's the first time we've seen that this game. Traveling violation. Josh Meerman obviously frustrated. And the Coopersville fans are letting the referees have it. Meerman, by the way, had done that to the Crockett side in the first quarter. He forced a couple turnovers. Now, this is going to be very important. Let's mark this. The Broncos have a 17-16 lead when the press came on. Let's see if it has any impact on this game. Andre Johnson tries the baseline, gives it to Yearby. And it rolls out, scooped up by Phillip Jones just into the game. Boy, Crockett is right there despite Ager having no points right now. Down court for Boom, who missed the layup. And a tough one to convert. He was on the fly. Andre Johnson, the bounce pass. Adams running through the lane, spoons it up. No good. There's a foul. And Ezekiel Adams, very strong for a guy 6'2", 6'3". He can really slash. Let's talk a little bit of strategy. At some point, Crockett is going to have to start making shots from the outside. Everything they do is ball to basket. And eventually, Coopersville will figure that out and just put five guys in the basket right under the hole and say, look, if you guys don't want to make some jump shots, you're not going to get hmm. anything inside. That, by the way, is three fouls now on Evan Hare. As the free throw spins out. So Hare's got to go sit down again. He is their inside presence. And... You're right, Tim. If Crockett keeps on pounding it inside, that's the one guy that could have answered that defensively. I agree. Zeke Adams back to the line. This one rolls in. Hater. No look dish off. Thank you very much. Think he'll play for the Sacramento Kings someday? <laughs> My goodness. 1917 Broncos. Little jump pass out to Adams. They kick it out, but again, they're not really looking for that three, though it's open to them. It's safe to say dribble drive, a big part of the Crockett offense. It seemed like a good idea, too. Rebound, rolling out of bounds. It'll be back to the Broncos when we return. Nash Pater. Showing a little razzle and or dazzle here at Breslin. And it's the Broncos by two. Nineteen seventeen Coopersville, Fox Sportsnet's exclusive TV coverage of the Detroit Tigers at spring training will continue Monday. It'll be the Tigers and the Braves. Join Kirk Gibson and me for Grapefruit League action from Lakeland Monday night at 7 on Fox Sports Net. Excuse me. You guys want to see that pass oh, again? If you don't, I'm going to run to the truck and check it out myself. <laughs> Robert Murphy did like the delivery. A well run offense, 10 assists. Wow. He plays a very enjoyable game. I, I really am having fun watching. Pater and his ability to run an offense. His handle is peerless. His Oops. passing <laughs> has some faults to it. <laughs> Not a great decision. That must have been, I'm going to go A, and you threw it to B. Well, and we talked to Rich Rensman, the coach of Coopersville, before the game. You asked the question, don't you ever want to rein him in? He says, no, not publicly anyway. <laughs> a foul as Simon crashed and tried to lay it in. You were making the comment earlier about the Sacramento Kings. I, I feel you were making a reference about Jason Williams. Yes, and, and there's another Jason Williams, a guy at Duke, that a lot of these guys really seem to talk very glowingly about. I mean, to a man, and this obviously is Michigan and Michigan State country. Seems like every guard that we talk to, when you ask them who's their favorite college basketball player, they say that Jason Williams, but Nash Pater's playing like the other one. Yes. 
and then also NBA players. Everybody right now has gravitated to Vince Carter, placing Michael Jordan. Good use of the, of the word gravity in there, too, when you talk about Carter. That's what he defies seemingly every night. Full court pressure here. Very good idea because they want to try to speed up Crockett. Crockett is going inside a great deal in a half court game. A whistle and a foul. Let's see if there's a foul here. Could raise a couple questions. Oh, yep, that should have been the other way. Kind of tough because the official was blocked out, but it was Wallace Richards that grabbed his shirt. And that's the call that was made. Second foul on Richards. It does go against the Rockets. Simon hangs in the lane, bounced off the back iron. Simon's got it again. Now Meerman scoops it up and in. Josh Meerman. He's another guy more intent on playing football at the college level. Looking to do that at Grand Valley. Looks like he's got some game in this sport, though, too. Two and a half to go in the first half. Looking inside yet again. Now out to Johnson. Crockett can win these low-scoring games, by the way. They won 40 to 39 to advance a few games back. There's a foul inside on Boom. Actually, they'll give it to Meerman instead. That is going to be his first. And the 10th team foul, so now the double bonus. And boy, if you had said that Crockett would be within five and Ager would be scoreless, he's finally got a chance to get off to Schneider here from the line. A solid defensive effort. Kind of frustrating, though, because a hot score easily frustrated when he isn't involved in the offense. You know, he doesn't know how to play when he's not contributing points. There we go. One out of two. And sometimes all it takes is a free throw to ignite a score. Let's keep it nigh on number 1-5 Teal. Now they're going to get Ager reaching in as we keep an eye on 1-5 Teal. Now, Ager averages 22 points a game. You're expecting big, big things from him in this title game tonight. But right now, 1.1 rebound. Substituting Coopersville now. They'll get Nash Pater out of the game for a well-deserved rest, and Brian Klein checks in. Brian Boom steps to the line. Pretty good name for an All-State running back. <laughs> you may remember if you tuned into Fox this fall, scored a touchdown in the Silverdome in the state championship game. All-State running back. Give him six points for the game. And the largest Coopersville lead at 24-18. Ironically enough, when Crockett put the press on, all of a sudden, Coopersville started pressing two, and it's worked their way. They've extended their one-point lead. With a 7-1 run. Tipped out of bounds, kicked out of bounds. But again, no shot clock to reset at the high school level. Substituting now, Crockett will get in a Chris Gerard. And Ezekiel Adams will have a seat. Wow. Boy, they let it go. They let two. And Yearby has 12 points in his first half. Yearby playing the role of runaway bull, <laughs> clearing some space for himself. He averages 10 a game. He's got 12 already. As we tick down towards the end of the first half, Study in contrast, in style. Lean in, runner won't go. Tipped out of bounds, it'll go to Crockett. We talked about it. Suburban Grand Rapids, that's Coopersville, inner city. Detroit, that is Crockett. And Metro Detroit has had a stranglehold on the Class B title, really since 1993. This is Metro Detroit's at least uh, the city of Detroit's 
only participant in the tournament. The three is good from Ager, and there he goes. Hey Josh, this is my favorite game of the day. This is the best played ball. Each team seems to have a game plan. They're following it. Not gonna make every shot. There's gonna be breakdowns, but I really see what the coaches are trying to do through their players. And now they've got, at least uh, the Rockets do, they've got Ager finally in the ledger from the field. Well, you sent out the APB for Ager. <laughs> He's answered it. Free throw from Ehrman is good. He's got another one coming. I guess technically, we talk about the representation from Detroit in the tournament. You want to include Pontiac Northern in that mix? Are you, are you trying to say Pontiac is in Detroit? No, I'm just trying to get somewhere close. Yeah, you can get there, I suppose. You just go up <laughs> 75, but for a while. <laughs> 40 seconds left in a very entertaining first half. But again, the point being, you're usually looking for at least one or two teams from the city of Detroit, one or two from Flint. There's a three. Rattles and won't go. And this tournament has been unique because there have been other parts of the state well represented. Charlevoix has been here. We've seen the southeast part of the state well represented. Kalamazoo well represented. And from around the Grand Rapids area, here is Coopersville at 26 and 1. Turning it over with the travel. And now Crockett can tie it or take the lead going into the locker room. Yeah, everybody's going to focus on the scoring and the rebound, but the coach's son, Scott Renzma, really deserves a lot of credit for being an unheralded star. His defense in the first half has been just outstanding. A lot of small plays. Ager forces it up. No basket, offensive foul. Now a last shot for the Broncos. Very difficult living life at the top of the opponent's scouting report. Time for the launch. In the final second to steal. And a low scoring first half that was every bit as entertaining as we had hoped. At the end of 16 minutes, Coopersville 25 and Crockett 23, each team looking for its first state title. And we go to Shireen Sasky standing by with Rich Renzma of the Broncos. Thanks a lot. And coach, I would think you're pretty happy overall with the first half. You got the slim lead, but you're keeping Maurice Ager in check. Yeah, we're happy with the lead. Uh, they're a great team, but uh, we got in some foul trouble. Our big man is sitting on the bench, and that doesn't do us any good. He's a great scorer and, and plays some good D, so uh, we're a little concerned about that. Are you surprised, though, the way Ager has played so far? No, I, I, it's gone pretty much the way I thought it was. Uh, we just have to finish a little bit better and block out a little bit better, and then it should be a great game all the way through. How about Nash Pater's performance today? Oh, he does a great job for us. Uh, we're asking him to do a whole lot, and he's going to have to do another 16 minutes. Well, good luck, Coach. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Josh? All right, Shireen, thank you very much. 25-23, and more halftime activities in a moment. The Class B final between Crockett and Coopersville. Welcome back to East Lansing for Championship Saturday. March Madness is flowing through East Lansing as we have our final state final game of the evening, the Class B final, a two-point game right now. Well, this is part of a marathon of basketball here on Fox Sports Net. The four high school basketball games today. Then later on tonight, the Pistons take on the Golden State Warriors. And for more on that matchup, we take you from the banks of the Red Cedar River to Fred McLeod and Greg Kelser in the city by the bay. Thanks very much, Shereen. I'm sure it's a little bit warmer here than it is where you are. Of course, we're out in the Bay Area as the Pistons have game three of their Western Swing taking on the Golden State Warriors tonight. And Greg, a classic case of making sure you do not take the opponent lightly. Yes, they've struggled, but you can't just roll the ball on and expect to win. Well, you remember the Pistons went into Washington a week and a half ago, and they faced a struggling Washington Wizard team. But Washington came up with one huge effort that night and put a loss on the Pistons, a very disappointing loss. So the Pistons, I'm sure, will take that memory with them into this game as they prepare for the Warriors and try to get on top of them and stay on top as early as possible. This game will feature a couple of Tar Heels who together got their sheepskins at 
North Carolina, you may recall, Jerry Stackhouse and Antoine Jameson. Antoine Jameson, yes, he is a rising star in this league. Make no mistake about that. Tough inside has really improved the range on his jump shot. Fred, this year he has already put together back-to-back 51-point -to -back efforts, and one of them came against the Los Angeles Lakers. Not exactly chopped liver. And his numbers will be certainly something that uh, other clubs will peruse next year because he'll be a, a part of the free agent class along with Vince Carter in the year 2002. And with almost double-double numbers, perhaps he will be uh, courted by a lot of other clubs. A guy who really has been a, a shining star for this team and hopes to play tonight, rookie Mark Jackson right now, would probably win that award if people were pressed to make their vote right tonight. His numbers certainly back it up. And a surprise, if you will, so far this season been playing and toiling in somewhat obscurity again because of the Warriors ineptness this year record wise but I really like him a lot of people talk about him being a solid player for a number of years and a lot of people are thinking that it should he opt in a couple of years to leave Golden State they'd love to have him on their roster and Jackson day to day so again he will be a game time decision so she'll send it back to you we're jealous because Greg and I missed <laughs> the uh, annual March Madness of course at the Breslin Center so uh, save us some uh, video highlight folks will you well, Fred, rest assured, because the guys in the truck have been working on it all day long, and here's a sneak peek of what you'll see when you get back to the office. Let's start with the Class D State Finals between the Covert Bulldogs and the Marion Eagles. Scoop Woods gave Marion fits all day, getting this basket, then the steal, and he picks up the assist as Justin Mahone gets two of his nine points. Marion's Jeff Levins countered with five three-pointers on the day for 20 points in Eagles best. But in the second half, Scoop Woods feeds Cordell Madden. And then Scoop decides, well, I'll take it myself. 13-point performance for him. Covert wins the Class D title 57-49. That is the fifth title in school history. Moving on to the Class C game with Charlevoix, or Kalamazoo Christian and Charlevoix coach Jerry Mastenbrook trying to capture the title in just his second year. The Muir brothers leading the way first, Greg. Then Nate gets the put back. They gave Fitz all day. Rob Boss kept the Raiders in it inside. Thanks to great play, he gets the board in the hoop. Scott Parrish kicked in a game high 26 points on the day, but it wasn't enough because the Raiders just couldn't contain the comments. The offense shot 65% from the field. Good D down the stretch. Parrish. And then Greg Meyer finishes things off. Kalamazoo Christian wins the Class C title. 72-69. Jerry Mastenbrook brings the school its first state championship since 1983. Class A, Kalamazoo Central, Pontiac Northern. The Huskies, Ricky Morgan, gave the Maroon Giants problems all afternoon. First the drive, then this deep three. He had 22 points on the day. Greg Jennings, meanwhile, 27 points for Central, led all scores, but it really wasn't enough. Northern controlled the boards all day. Lester Abraham takes it, then follows with a basket of his own. Northern celebrating, thinking they'll win their first title in school history. Morgan finishes it off, and yes, the pledge he made to his coach, we will win a Class A title. They do it 87-71. So three championships crowned today. Three champions on their way home with the title. One left, 16 minutes to go, so stay with us. Who will be the Class B champion? We'll find out next. Thanks, Suzanne. Coopersville by two at halftime over the Updoor team from Detroit. The Crockett Rockets have 23, 12 of those 23 from Yared Yerby. And at Breslin Center, Josh Lewin along with Tim McCormick. Thanks for hanging with us all day long, we hope. This is the fourth game. We've decided a champion already at D, at C, at A. Now we go to B, and it's been a very entertaining first half here. Josh, it's, it's worth revisiting the different styles that these teams play. Crockett, interior base. Coopersville, very athletic. And we've had statistically an even game. Beautiful delivery inside. And one thing that I've really enjoyed is the diversity of the attack. Number 24, Nash Prater has done a lot of damage. And there you see the delivery. Josh Muirman, very athletic. And for Crockett, Yearby has been the strongest force in the lane. He's done a lot of good low post moves and also, Occasional jump shot, the significance of that. 
Maurice Ager has not been a strong factor. There's an offensive foul. Yeah, Maurice Ager has only four points right now, and incredibly, even with their leading scorer being held to four, Crockett is to within two. So we look forward to a very exciting third quarter, fourth quarter. Do we hear overtime? I mean, it's the kind of game that's shaping up towards being right now. 25-23 at the break. Hey, as long, hey, as long 25, Crockett 23, the Class B title game. And uh, so far, the halftime stats, we'll take a look at them, brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. Is it my imagination, Tim, or don't the last four favor the team that's trailing in this game? It's interesting. I think the biggest thing is that you have two teams that have different styles that have played very hard, and I see this game as dead even, and I see that it probably going to go right down to the wire. I don't know if it's overtime oh. or not, but I think it's going to be a very close finish. We need more basketball. Let's go to Robert Murphy, the coach of the Crockett Rockets, standing by with Shereen Sasky. Well, coach, from listening to some of your huddles during the first half, I know you're not happy with the overall play, yet you're only down by two. Yeah, we uh, played like yesterday in the first half. We didn't have a good first half. We missed a few free throws. Uh, Made a few uh, mistakes turning the ball over, but uh, you 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 can prepare or, or you'll see a better half. Uh, so. Maurice Sager with just four points in the first half. You certainly don't expect a performance like that from him. How do you get him more involved in the offense? Uh, it's up to Maurice. He's supposed to be one of the best juniors in the state. Uh, big player, step up in big games. So I'm just going to see what he do on his own. He'll be ready. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half. Thanks. Josh? Shereen, thanks. Ager, one of the big guns for the Rockets, has been held down. Evan Hare, same story for the Broncos, plagued by foul trouble. We'll start the third quarter after this. Well, Coopersville trying to make it a 27-1 and season and closing with a 23-game win streak. If they can pull this off, Let's check the leading scorers from that first half. We've talked a lot about Yearby, the senior force inside for the Crockett Rockets. And the Ager, meantime, he averages 22. He's got only four. Very even spread for Coopersville. But also, Hare was in foul trouble. You expect him to score a lot of points. He has three. Can he remain out of getting that fourth foul? Well, as we begin, Hare is on the bench. And they will go with Mike Simon instead. He'll inbound. There's Ager, the four points, only one rebound, too. And you heard Coach Robert Murphy say it's up to him. It's up to Maurice Ager to step up in the big game in the second half and get this going. And worth revisiting the comments by Robert Murphy, his coach. He's being recruited by Michigan and Michigan State. This is a big time recruit. Hater had it rim out. And the rebound by Yearby. Watch Ager. I got a feeling he's going to get some shots early in this second half. Well, the man that would get him the ball is Andre Johnson, number one. And those two guys are tight. They look for each other. Johnson used to passing up his own shot to make a shot for Ager. And here is Ager with the basketball, being harassed by Brian Boom. Very deliberate are the Rockets here. Remember, no shot clock in high school basketball. Plenty of time to set it up and see what happens. Rob Richardson got in early foul trouble. Got to get rid of it. He does. Right at the count of four. And on the baseline, traveling violation against Adams. So they hung on to the ball for a good 30, 35 seconds, then finally coughed it up. Well, I can't say that Aker was very aggressive on that possession. Caught the ball a couple times and passively gave it up. Broncos working around the perimeter. Josh, a lot of motion, both teams in this game. Not a lot of structure at all. Meerman on the run. The tip won't go. And the rebound taken away by Rob Richardson, who's heading to Eastern Michigan to play both football and basketball. Now Johnson again. And a timeout. Robert Murphy wants time. And you wonder here if he's going to get right up in the face of Ager or instead the ball handler Johnson.
Maury Sager, the one thing that Robert Murphy tells us is usually you can get in his face and coach him a little bit. A very coachable young man. He's our leading scorer. You know, he's a great player. But most important uh, thing about Maurice, he's uh, very coachable. You know, he listens, you know, to everything we say. He doesn't really try to do too much on his own. And other than being a great player, he's, he's very, very coachable. That's what I like most about him. And it's very important for Robert Murphy to continue teaching. This program is only three years old, and a lot of these guys have not played a lot of organized ball in their background. There he goes. Ager pulls his way in, and he ties it up. I think that's what Coach Murphy wanted, that he wasn't getting the first couple possessions. Ager has the talent to take this game over. But you're right, I think the word passive in the first, say, 17, 18 minutes of the game probably fits. Foul's gonna be called as Johnson reached in. And that'll be his first. Coopersville's largest lead was six. Now we're tied at 25. The Rockets 22 and three, all three losses right before the PSL tournament. They lost to Renaissance, to Redford, and Finney. Averaging only 40 points per game in those losses. Josh, mark this down. 552. Hare is back in the game with three fouls. And there he goes to the bucket. He couldn't get the layup. And Ager up for maybe his best box out rebound of the evening so far. Only one basket in this third quarter. The both the teams combined. Ager, the pull up. Airballed it. And the rebound taken by Pater. Nash Pater, and here's where he creates. Four fires. And it's Brian Boom who gets the rebound. Three ball coming. Good from Renzma. Four, four three-pointers in this game for Coopersville now, Tim. Can you imagine the thrill of a dad coaching his dream game in the finals? His son is playing for his team. He's playing a solid floor game, and he makes the three about five feet away from dad. Rich Rensma began coaching the Broncos the year his son was born. 17 years ago is when he took this gig. He'd been coaching for years before that, too. Just not as a head man at Coopersville, but he's had this gig 17 years now in a row. Battle for the rebound. Johnson's got it. And he is fouled. Rensma picks it up. He's the man that drained that three moments ago. Nailed the three-pointer here. Rensma is going to be a student next year at Grand Valley State. My recommendation, he should go ahead and try to play some basketball. He does a lot of good things. It has to be very difficult playing for your dad as well. Coach told us today, says, you know, I, there have been times that I've yelled at my son a little bit. He kind of smirked. The biggest smirk is when we broke it to him that his son told us that his most memorable moment in life was seeing Ozzy Osbourne in concert. <laughs> you would think if they, they win a championship, do you think this would replace <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne? I would think it would have to be right up there. Yeah, the, the grimace that came across the face of Dad when we dropped that on him. Nice guy, too. Didn't he say, please, Josh, don't mention that over the air. And he yes. fired it off no, there. I, I wrote nice it guy. down. Note to self, make sure you use the Osborne story. <laughs> <laughs> and he helped you out so much. He did, too. Great guy, Rich Rensma. Look at that fadeaway from Pater. He's got eight points. Each and every one of them has brought the crowd to its feet over on that Coopersville side. The steal by Meerman, and the no-look pass was bobbled. Meerman grabs it right back. Josh Meerman tripping it inside. That's taken out of midair. Was looking for Evan Hare. Shoo. Get tuckered out just watching Meerman play defense. Crossover move, and the dump off the layup. Good by Richardson. That was Maurice Head just in the game with a nice little crossover breakdown. Three-point game again. A collision, no foul. Brian Boom lobs into hair, playing with the three. Foul strong, missed the layup. Yearby, yet another rebound. Jared Yearby, 12 points, eight boards. Josh, how about this for a little Crockett strategy? 
if you can go ahead and get that fourth foul on Hare, your job gets a lot easier. See if they try to get it inside. The Broncos really getting up to defend, especially Josh Meerman. He's been pushing and shoving with the other number 20, Maurice Head. Low scoring, third quarter. Yearby, little shake and bake, and now a spin. On the baseline, he's blocked by Boom, and the foul's on him. So that was completely clean. Yeah, if you were watching this game and had no history of the players, rather than saying that Ager is the star for the Rockets, you would say it's Jared Yearby. Even though on that play, I saw a lot of ball on that block shot, but he has been the best player for Crockett. Rattles a free throw in. Jared Yearby was at Crockett when Robert Murphy came over from Central. Andre Johnson and Yearby are the two holdovers from that five-win season in 1999. Wouldn't it be something if Yearby and Johnson both end up carrying the coach to a most improbable state title? They're to within a point, 30-29. Zatarga wearing number 42 in the basketball. We remember him for an 80-yard touchdown to catch in a state championship game on our air back around Thanksgiving. And Joe Longstreet, the quarterback, he also plays basketball for the Broncos. Orchard Lake St. Mary's won this game, though. Orchard Lake St. Mary's ran the table last year, winning in basketball and winning in football. There's the quarterback we spoke of. Longstreet to the target. Quite a program that George Cora has at Orchard Lake St. Mary. They were beaten by this Crockett team. Right. Back. Orchard Lake St. Mary was up the whole game, and Crockett closed, finished really late in the game. Won the game by a point. Three ball won't go. That from Pater. Crockett has won by one point, two points, and nine points in the tournament so far to get here today. Coopersville's had an easier time of it. There's a steal, and here they come. Pater down court, leading the way to Boom, who scores. Brian Boom's got eight. The Broncos have won by 22, 12, and 11 to this point. A swing to the elbow, and the foul is going to be called on Richardson. He smacked Pater in the chin. Hey, and, Josh. Yeah. If somebody doesn't start recruiting Josh Nash Pater, that's a huge mistake. This kid is tough. I love his skills. Very good with the ball. His handle's good, his quickness. This kid deserves to play some major college basketball. Not being recruited much at all right now. It's a huge mistake. Ryan Boom, double team. And again, it's Pater as we tick down to 139 left in the third. Hare rolls it in. Evan Hare, who says his favorite player is Larry Bird because he hits the big shots in the second half. <laughs> That's timely. Andre Johnson now. Again, it's a five-point lead. I would have thought it's because they're both blind. <laughs> Only 15 points total in this third quarter. Loose ball scooped up. Ager stripped to the ball again. And out of the pack comes Meerman. General Custer odds, so he pulls back with a minute to go. Josh. Tim. Crockett has very little chance of winning this game if Ager doesn't start contributing. Yeah, you're right. Very, very quiet night for him. He looks very passive out there. He's not demanding the ball. And as their best player, as their All-Stater, he's got to get out there and say, look, give me the ball. I've got some work to do. It needs to start immediately. Pater lays it off. Nierman had to recover. He dumps it off, and here's Pater. No call, no call. And 25 seconds left. All right, here's an opportunity. Spread court. Ball is in his hands. And let's see 
if Morris Ager has a chance to create something, but you know that the Coopersville defense is going to be coming as soon as he starts his move. 10 seconds, and will Ager put it on his own shoulders here? Meerman up in his face and commits the foul. You know, that's one thing we should mention in all fairness. The defense by both Rensma and Meerman just shrink wrapping Ager all night. It's been terrific. But I agree with you, Ager has the talent, if he wants to, you would figure, to just take control here as we head towards the fourth quarter. Here's the three from Johnson. And Andre Johnson, just before the buzzer, makes it a two-point game again. The teams traded nines in the third quarter. Eight minutes to go, and it's a two-point game for the championship. Our Saturday basketball marathon concludes tonight when the Pistons visit Golden State. Pistons pregame starts it off at 10, followed by game action with the best-dressed broadcasters in basketball, Fred McLeod and Greg Kelser. Pistons Warriors coming up later on Fox Sports Net. We go to Shereen Sasky. Thanks, Josh. I was just in the Rockets huddle, and the coaches were telling the players, we won that quarter. We won the third quarter. Now you just have to go out and win the fourth. But they can only do it if they keep crashing the boards. Josh? Shereen, thank you. In this game, Crockett has only attempted 25 field goals. Remember, in the Class A game that we just saw, Greg Jennings of Kalamazoo Central took 29 all by himself. <laughs> So they're being very deliberate, or the Rockets. They're looking for Ager, and it rolls off him out of bounds. Maybe the right idea to electrify the Crockett crowd, but they just couldn't complete the pass. But this is really surprising because Ager was so good in the semifinals yesterday. Thomas doing the ball handling, driving baseline. Into Hare, who forces it up, won't go. And the rebound yanked away by Richardson. He, too, has played with foul trouble tonight. Still a two-point game. The largest lead has been six for Coopersville. They've had that twice. You know what's amazing right now? That so far, Brocker has done such a good job on the glass, and it doesn't seem to matter. Ager, there he goes. And Crockett's got the lead. Took the shot from the corner. But now Pater. And they zip it around to Thomasma. Pater now on Ager. Tiptoes to the baseline and draws the foul. Can Maurice Ager take over in the fourth quarter? That is the question for Crockett. Even though the defense is loaded up to stop him. That's a beautiful catch, feet set by Maurice Ager. And I'm really interested to keep an eye now and see how aggressive he is. Wrestling for the ball, it is a held ball, the possession arrow favoring Coopersville. And you saw the graphic a moment ago, Richardson, the senior center for the Rockets with four fouls now. Hare has three for the Coopersville Broncos. Rockets substituting now. And wisely, Robert Murphy will get Richardson out of the game. He gets Ezekiel Adams back in. It's like a zone defense from Crockett. Good idea. The entry pass, it is knocked loose, but boom, recovers. Thomas Mike. And the Broncos content to work for the good shot. Both teams have gotten very delivered here in the second half. Boom, the jumper good. Brian Boom's got 10. Seesawing back in front, the Broncos by one. This is Coopersville's first appearance in the state final, same for Crockett. Through the lane, Ezekiel Adams. That's his first bucket, and here we go with Crockett up by one. Thomas Manel, as we get down to 5.50 left in regulation. A little jump pass going cross court. Rensma has three blocks. 
Johnson rips it away. And he leads it to Ager. Ager all the way with a finger roll. You see, that's a major college athlete right there. He elevated and finished above the rim. Here comes Crockett now. And Robert Murphy, whatever he said to Maurice Ager, the junior, well, Ager is back in business. And so are the Rockets. Folks, coming up later, the Regional Sports Report, a special time of 9.30 on Fox Sports Net tonight. Talking about Drew Henson and the Spartans' hopeful march to Minneapolis. We'll preview the Pistons and Warriors getting you ready for that at 10 o'clock. Soon, the Reach gets a new name, a new time, starting April 2. Look for the Detroit Sports Report nightly at 10. 9.30, remember, is airtime tonight, a special airtime right after our game here, the Class B Final. Hare, the spot-up jumper. Well, he's shaking off the foul trouble, Tim. Played a smart half. How do you like this for an amazing number? So far, Coopersville in this game only has 11 rebounds total. Wow. Big part of that. So far, only 13 missed shots on the game for very patient offense by Crockett. Chris Gerard with a bounce pass now going to Ager. They look for him to be the take charge guy here in the final 440. Ezekiel Adams backing out. Each team again looking for its first state title. Oakenfield's coach has been at it 17 years, Rich Rensman. Rockets coach Robert Murphy has been at the helm for three. And the school only in business for seven. Oh, and 40. The Rockets record after two years of organized high school basketball. Here's a timeout call. As they were trying to get the shot established, and instead Robert Murphy says, let's talk about it. Both these teams, you can really say, I hope we're not overstating this, Tim, but obviously on the Coopersville side, You've got a 26 and one team that has come from out of uh, the, the Grand Rapids area and has really won the hearts of, of, of that region. On the other side, you've got the Crockett Rockets who are pretty much Hoosiers meets Lean On Me, if you want to put it in, in the movie form. This is a, a team that has completely rallied around its coach. They have bought into the program completely. And Robert Murphy was told that he was crazy to take this job, inheriting 0 and 40. But you mentioned it. They went from five wins to 15 to now 22 and counting this year. He was told, you will not win here for several years. Undaunted, he took the job and in an area where St. Martin de Pori has dominated Class B for many, many years, they stepped up confidently and have a chance to do something very significant. Both teams are just wonderful stories. But he says now when he goes around to the middle schools, that people know the name of Crockett, and that was not a happening last year and the year before. Meantime, everybody on the west side of the state has certainly heard of Coopersville. The Broncos haven't lost since the very first couple weeks of the season. They were beat by Calvin Christian, and a big reason for that was that the football players were not back in basketball shape at that point. They have run it all the way since then. They have not lost. Adam for the bounce pass. Things still awfully deliberate here for the Rockets. Boom! Stands up and is floored and picks up the foul. That'll be the second on him. It seems that Robert Murphy is content to shorten this game up, let the clock run, take it down and get a chance to win this thing. They've got a one-point lead and the ball. Well, right now, Rich Renz was trying to substitute, and the officials wouldn't let him do it. He was trying to get Thomas Mudd, known for his defense, into the game. And he's hopping mad over there that his man wasn't allowed to check in. There's a whistle, and there's a foul. It's going to be called on Josh Meerman. And now Thomas was able to check in for Boom. 
And for Coopersville, 34, Thompson. Rich Rensma is saying it. He apparently told the official that Brian Boom has a, has a heart problem, is what we're being told, he said. And he was saying for a medical reason he wanted him off the court. That's going against Adams. As we get down to 329 left. Very strange turn of events. Let's get inside the minds of Coopersville. The best possessions I've seen have started with a hair touch inside. He's a very good passer, skilled scorer. Meerman thought about the three. Now here's Hare. Up over two men. Evan Hare, six points in the second half. Ten for the game. At this point, Brock, Crockett cannot afford to play that passive, deliberate style. Third down, they need to try to get something in the basket, and it's worth repeating. Maurice Ager got them here. He needs to get more aggressive in this offense. He's basically standing in the corner watching the action. 40 to 39, that's the score by which the Rockets beat last year's champ, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, to advance in this tournament. To the baseline again. Here's the shot from Yearby. Wouldn't go. Rebound on the floor, finally taken away by Thomasman. Now the keep away changes uniforms. Well, we thought we might see low score. Oh. Almost a steal as Johnson had a hand in there. Under two now. The Class B title game here at Breslin in East Lansing. Hare. Stolen by Yearby, but he's called for the foul. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I'm anxious to see this one. A little bit careless. Awfully close. I don't, I don't think we need to say anything. <laughs> Simply an inbound situation here. And there's the steal by Ager. Maurice Ager spinning, open. He is fouled. Nash Pater came back with a minute 47 to go. The superstar for the Rockets goes to the line. Is that four fouls? That is four on Nash Pater. Brian Boom apparently okay, will come back in. Let's go to Shereen Sasky. Thanks, Josh. Brian Boom has a heart condition that when he overexerts himself, his heart begins to race and it races too fast. He has to sit down and rest. And that's why Coach Rensma was so upset with the officials because Brian's heart was racing and he wanted to get him out of the game. Obviously, after some rest, he's fine as he's back in right now. And he did sit doubled over with his neck being massaged for those five minutes that he was on the bench as we had our eyes on him. Thanks, Shireen. 40-40 tie. And Ager stepping up now. Remember, he had only one point at the half. Actually, four as he hit the three right at the end of the half. Two free throws. 41-40 now, Crockett. And last time in this position, down one point, Evan Hare got the post touch. And I'm sure that Rich Rensma is going to target the play that he thinks creates the best mismatch for his Coopersville squad. Now, Southwest Michigan is crowned a Class D champion today. That was Colbert. They're now looking for some more magic here from Coopersville, a team that came in 26 and 1. Crockett standing in their way. There's Colbert's win earlier today. Kalamazoo Christian was a winner over Charlevoix, and if you missed it, the Class A, it was Pontiac Northern, its very first state title. Ricky Morgan led the way with 22. But now right here in B, certainly the, the most exciting game of the day so far, right down to the wire. Well, the, the C game came down to the wire similarly before Kalamazoo Christian pulled away. 
But we've talked all game, Tim, about the, the contrast of these two teams. The only unifying factor is that neither of these teams was supposed to be here. If you would have asked people before the season, I don't think Coopersville and Crockett would have been your final that was predicted. No, but both, both squads had great confidence. And the common denominator, they spent their summers in summer leagues. They played 30 to 35 games each versus top-notch competition in preparation for this final minute and 40 seconds. A state championship is on the line, but it's more than that. It's about lifetime memories. They'll be telling their grandkids about this day many years to come, and I'm sure that each of them will have a videotape. One-point game with 137 left, and Meerman, who has quietly been terrific in this game for the Broncos. Notice the the full frontal on Evan Hare. They don't want to give him a chance to get any of his quality work done. Meerman trying to spin free. And the coach's son, Rensma. He walked. Yes, he did. Meerman, a rare, rare mistake. He has been so solid tonight. All right, strategy time. Got to get after the ball. Still too early to foul but you have to really start to gamble on defense. Each team has only attempted around 30 shots in this game. Clock it by one and with the ball. I wouldn't do anything right now if I was Crock except dribble, drive, keep the court spread. They don't need to shoot. Ager double teamed, and what do we have? Timeout called by Crockett. Less than a minute to go. Full timeout. And I tell you what, if Crockett pulls this off, Robert Murphy, who aspires to coach at the Division I level, he knows he's not going to hop from Crockett, say, to Michigan or Michigan State. But for a guy that was successful as an assistant at Central, learned his trade at Central State, playing his college ball for Kevin Porter, former Piston and former Washington Bullet. This is quite a thing to put on your resume if Robert Murphy and the Crockett Rockets can pull this off. I think some people will pay attention to those career aspirations of young coach Robert Murphy. Also, what we're going to see here, Coopersville can be very aggressive. They are not in the bonus. If they do need to foul, they want to have that, that situation where a foul is going to put them on the line. Six team fouls against the Broncos right now, five against the Rockets of Crockett. Both these teams cast as the little guy. Coopersville, a town of 5,000. Crockett, a school that again, just a couple years ago, was winless on the basketball court. Whichever team wins, it's a great story. And honestly, whichever team loses, it's amazing that they're here. Crockett basketball leading by one, and Boom almost had the seal. Now Johnson able to spin it away. And Ezekiel Adams trapped but gets it away to Johnson. Ager, the pull up, he's fouled. He missed the shot, but he will go to the line. He confidently knocked down his last two free throws. Now, Ager, one of the better free throw shooters that the Rockets have. And again, he had only four points at the half. But he's added nine points here in the second half. Good. Free throws for the junior, Ager. A three-point game. Still too early to rely on the three here. Get the first quick shot that you can. Cater, though, heaves it up, and he missed, and Ager the rebound. Ball goes to Crockett on the tie-up. Well, Pater, and you don't blame him for wanting to hit the big shot. He's been doing that all year. But he had a man in his face, and he was on the run when he let it go. 
the reason I think that you get the quick two is because the defense is covering the three-point line. That's a very difficult off-balance shot with a hand in your face. The defense was spread. If he just keeps on going, I think he can get right to the rim. Still got to be honest with you, I like his game a lot. Yeah, he was fun to watch, isn't he? Well, one of many seniors for Coach Rich Renslin. That's the finality of it for Coopersville. They've got certainly some talent coming back next year. It's not like the cupboard is bare, but this is the year Rich Renslin really feels. Says this team has always had heart, but not always enough talent to get it done. This year he's got both. Notice a lot of gambling now. They can't afford to play any kind of passive defense. Maybe try to take a charge. Ager hauls it in and is fouled immediately by Boom. So again, Ager will trot down, try and stick some free throws now. That's the eighth team foul, so see if Ager can hit the first one. Gives you an idea of the immense talent of Maurice Ager. He has a chance to end up these free throws with 17 points without really doing a whole lot to, to show you his skill. He's just out there. He's so talented, he's so skilled that he's automatically going to score points. Gets the bonus and a chance for a five-point Rocket lead. Their largest of the night. Now remember, the Broncos have some three-point gunners, including Pater. Hare fires, and it won't go. Hager gets the rebound. And he is fouled. That'll be on Meerman. We're down to 24.8. And Ager parades down right in front of his adoring fans. The Crockett fans are going nuts. And Ager gets to shoot right near them. Josh, I can't tell you how impressed I am with the maturity that Robert Murphy has shown his team. He's, he's really coached a masterpiece. They have not played their best game. They have not gotten rattled, however, and they are in a perfect position to make history. What a thrill. Look at the look on his face. Beautiful. Just beautiful. They called him crazy for taking the gig. Ball out of bounds and back to Crockett. They said it couldn't be done. You can't blame him for saying that. A startup program that began 0 and 40 after two years, and that's the point at which Murphy joined. Looks like he may have turned him into a champion. Ager is fouled by Boom. Now they're calling it intentional. Coopersville has had a wonderful season, and this game's not quite over yet, but they're cheering section has gone mute at this point. I have a feeling there's a lot of state championships in the future of the Crockett Rockets. Well, how about Ager from the free throw line? Isn't this something? He's only missed one. He's 10 of 11. The next year, you believe that this kid will be recognized in a lot of circles as a potential Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan. And if Robert Murphy really wants to be a D1 coach, you figure that's in his future someday, too. A foul with 12.2 to go. It has been a 9-0 run all on free throws down the stretch for Crockett. A team that doesn't own white uniforms. They play their games on the road. They have no home gymnasium. Nice gesture by Coach Renzma. Defeat is imminent. Get some of the hard workers on his bench an opportunity to play in this game. I really enjoyed this, Josh. What High a, caliber basketball. What a day, Timmy, and what a step up fourth quarter for Ager. And it really hurts at the other end. These Coopersville kids have had a, a wonderful season. The beauty of high school basketball, we have tears on both benches.
Coopersville held to only six points in the fourth quarter, only 15 in the second half. And it's been all Ager, mostly from the line. That one spins out. Coopersville on its way to only its second loss. Don't take away from what they've accomplished this year. But put your hands in the air for Crockett. They're the champions of Class B. Boy, and you're right about the maturity factor, too. This is a team that no one thought would be here, that was only created five years ago. And they are very coolly and calmly walking over to shake hands with a very worthy opponent. Somewhere you figure there's got to be a party. They have totally earned that. Welcome to the world of big time Michigan high school basketball to the Crockett Rockets. They're here to stay. How do you recruit? Kids to come to your high school if you have no gym, Robert Murphy says easy, you gotta win. If only it was that easy, it, it, it took a while. From zero wins to five to 15 and finally to 23 and a state championship. We're back in a moment. Well, Tim McCormick, what a day. We crowned four champions, maybe the most unlikely, these guys, the Crockett Rockets. No losers in this game. They played well, and rightly so. It was a close game. I really enjoyed today. It was wonderful basketball. Congratulations to Coopersville, too. A 26-2 season, not that shabby. Don't forget even more basketball coming your way tonight. The Pistons and Golden State coverage begins at 10 o'clock. Congratulations to Covert, Kalamazoo Christian, Pontiac Northern, and finally Detroit Crockett. They are the four who wear the crown this year. For Tim McCormick and Shireen Sasky, Josh Lewin saying so long from the Breslin Center. Once again, the final in Class B, Crockett 49, Coopersville 40. You've been watching the MHSAA Finals on Fox Sports Net. Stay tuned now. The Regional Sports Report is coming up next.